welcome back to NPTEL, the National Program on Technology Enhanced Learning. As you are aware, we are in a series of lectures collectively entitled Cultural Studies. These lectures are being brought to you by the Indian Institutes of Technology and the Indian Institute of Science. The lectures are for students in engineering colleges and in IITs, uh, where humanities and social sciences are taught as both core and elective subjects. I am Lisa and I teach at the department of humanities and social sciences in IIT Guwahati. So, we have already been through the, the introductory lecture in the first lecture of this series. The lecture being given today is a continuation of the first lecture in that we look at the scope of cultural studies in a bid to understand cultural studies as a discipline, as a domain. Some of the characteristics of cultural studies uh, were already talked about in the first lecture. For instance, we saw that cultural studies was quite resolutely interdisciplinary in nature and by the fact that it has no uh, real referent and it is to do with ways of talking, we also found ways of talking about cultural forms, cultural practices. Uh, we saw that you know key word, key terms and concepts are central to the discourse of cultural studies. Well, um, before we begin to talk about uh, the topic in every lecture, we are going to um, do a brief recap okay, at the beginning of uh, you know um, uh, each lecture, we are going to talk about uh, briefly about what we did in the last lecture in a bid to you know retain a degree of continuity from the previous lectures. So, we move on now to the recap of lecture 1 and we saw that um, Chris Barker in his sage dictionary of cultural studies okay, terms cultural studies, the domain of cultural studies as an interdisciplinary or post disciplinary field and also he points to the fact that cultural studies really is a language uh, game, it is constituted by the language game of talking uh, you know in various ways in redescribing uh, you know uh, redescribing cultural practices, forms, institutions in a bid as we will find later uh, to in a bid to remove okay, uh, established ways and patterns of thinking that we may have collected uh, over so many years and that the theoretical terms developed and deployed by persons calling their work cultural studies, it is you know these them, uh, themselves constitute what cultural studies is. Then we found that Raymond Williams, Richard uh, Hoggard and E. P. Thompson are the three persons who were responsible for you know eventually leading to the discipline cultural studies and we also saw that uh, the you know we could actually pinpoint a date okay, as far as the birth so to speak of cultural studies as a discipline as an academic discipline uh, is concerned and we for that we need to go back to the establishment of the center for contemporary um, you know cultures, uh, studies of culture at the university of Birmingham okay, whose first director was Richard Hoggart. Then we saw that you know uh, this break from established ways of thinking which eventually led to the formation of cultural studies as a discipline is characterized by what we call culturalism, materialism and Marxism. Okay? Uh, at least the early phase, it is not that cultural studies as a discipline has you know remained with these characteristics as we shall see uh, there has been a cultural turn. We, in fact, we saw from Bennett and Frau that the cultural turn is about meanings, is about discourses, about meaning formation, signification along uh, you know 
uh, with the fact that it does retain a certain culturalism and a, a definitely a Marxist point of analysis. Then we define culture as something that is ordinary and we um, you know uh, distinguish it from commonsensical ways of looking at culture as you know uh, to do with uh, to do with cultural practices like for instance for uh, cultural forms like music theater etc and we said that no culture is ordinary and we saw through raymond williams that culture is a way of life and cultural studies you know uh, takes as its data the various everyday practices and cultural forms right um, that constitute our culture right so in that i should add here that popular culture also therefore becomes a uh, very important part of cultural studies, a very important part of the data of cultural studies, right. So, culture is or then ordinary, culture is a way of life, culture is democratized and culture is to do with the creation and generation of meaning, right. We also saw that you know we need to make a difference between cultural studies and the study of culture in that. Uh, the culture, the study of culture we may say safely is to do with the older ways of doing anthropology, okay? whereas cultural studies is to do with symbolic forms and their signifying practices. Therefore, a few of the ways in which culture is variously seen with uh, you know the points that we can glean from the last lecture okay, are these that culture is a tool. Okay? culture is the tool through which we make find our way in our social and cultural lives culture is a language culture refers to artifacts culture of course is a way of life and culture is deeply imbued with power so these are the various ways in which we shall be looking at culture in our uh, course cultural studies so the key source texts in uh, this second lecture are Chris Barker's Cultural Studies, Theory and Practice, a book which I said in um, lecture 1 may be the you know if you are to choose a particular text as a textbook this would be it and the other books in this referred to in this course are again by Barker the CH Dictionary of Cultural Studies and Making Sense of Cultural Studies, Stuart Hall's edited volume representations. Tony Bennett and John Frau's edited volume, the, Sa the Sage Handbook of Cultural Analysis, and Pramod Nair's An Introduction to Cultural Studies. Right? Well, so the the lecture today is um, designed in such a way as to be able to unpack, okay, the scope of cultural studies. So while we talk about the scope of cultural studies and all that is entailed. Okay, in the study of cultural studies, of course, we can't talk about all that is entailed, at least within you know the limits of a single um, you know one-hour lecture. But uh, we shall be able to understand what cultural studies is as a domain as we look at the various you know uh, the, you know the various things that fall into the scope of cultural studies. These would also you know all that I'm going to say in this lecture on understanding cultural studies is, if this, you know, most of it is going to be reflected in individual uh, lectures devoted to individual topics. Okay, so I hope by you know looking at some of the components of cultural studies, we will be able to understand uh, in a better way. Okay, what this uh, domain is all about, what this uh, discipline is all about, if at all we can call it a discipline. Fine. The first thing that we need to note here is many, you know, or other it is, um, uh, it has been an accepted way of considering uh, nature and nurture as separate. Okay, nature is um, related to biology. Nature is uh, people think nature is different from culture, but in our course, we are going to have you know uh, we are going to look at ourselves okay and, and ourselves as cultural beings right from a biocultural 
perspective. So, we bring in nature and nurture together, we do not really uh, separate these as you know binary oppositions and say that nature is different and nurture is different uh, in at least uh, the uh, you know the, the, uh, the cluster of lectures in module 1 um, devoted to what science has to tell us about ourselves as cultural beings. Therein we shall be able to see that nature and nurture cannot or nature and culture are not uh, to be separated when we try and build a discourse on understanding ourselves as cultural beings. Second, we uh, cultural studies also looks at the body, right. For, now, this follows from the further, you know, the slide before this. The individual body is not again a individual, not isolated, okay, and it is not, uh, you know, uh, it is not an individual body in the sense that the body becomes a social instrument. Okay. We are cultural beings, we, we are in a body. So, the body too is understood, the, one, the scope of cultural studies includes looking at the body as a social or a cultural instrument and a docile, you know, as one of uh, the philosophers Michel Foucault has said, as a docile tool of productivity, a malleable or manipulable tool of productivity. So, beginning with uh, biology, beginning with the body, we find that cultural studies also encompasses looking at the body as a cultural form, okay, not simply as a biological form. Next, as I mentioned in the first lecture, subjectivity is an immensely important term, it is a key term uh, with identity really perhaps you know among the most important terms in cultural studies and uh, much of what we are going to talk about hinges around subjectivity and uh, via Chris Barker we may define subjectivity uh, at th uh, you know on three levels. A that subjectivity may be defined as a condition of being a person and subjectivity are uh, also refers to the processes that go into the construction of a person and it is the experience of being a person. Recall also from the last lecture that objectivity is highly suspect in cultural studies. Okay. We understand everything to do with culture including science as emanating from human beings, from human knowledge, from knowledge produced by human beings okay. and much of it is understood as being subjective whether at the individual level or whether at the collective level. Okay. Knowledge therefore, cultural forms are seen as subjective forms and subjectivity is you know an important part, important component of cultural studies. Right? The next term that we have to look at is um, identity and um, like subjectivity, it is a cornerstone really of cultural studies and identi identity is also uh, a, uh, you know a key term that contributes to the discourse of cultural studies and uh, these other terms also come in the uh, come in as far as the cultural uh, studies uh, domain is concerned and these terms are terms like class ethnicity gender race and sexuality okay these are also part and parcel of ourselves as cultural uh, beings in that we belong to a certain class uh, or an ethnic group or at least um, a community or a race. We have certain sexual orientations uh, and also we are uh, our behavior is largely consider, uh, you know constructed by the expectations of gender roles and gender models. Okay. So, remember what was our mega question why do we live the kind of lives that we live. So, why do we live the kind of lives that we live is informed okay, by these uh, you know categories right. These categories are categories of identity, class, ethnicity, gender, race and sexuality right. So, are, are we as cultural beings also live out our lives according to where we find ourselves in these categories. What cultural studies does again is you know question uh, quite radically what is meant by common sense. Okay. Um, common sense cultural studies holds uh, 
may be spontaneous, it may be unconscious, but common sense is nothing but you know the habits of thinking, the patterns of thinking that we have you know uh, collected um, and which need to be queried. Okay, we need to um, scrutinize common sense and, and in a bit and our goal in culture studies is to show that whatever is common it need not be full of sense. Okay, so, our cultural practices are uh, informed by these uh, you know many forms of common sense which may behind their so called you know um, so called uh, innocent veneer or behind their so called naturalized of uh, you know uh, uh, naturalized uh, hues may actually contribute okay to certain social inequalities and may also help in power to instantiate itself in many ways. Okay. So, common sense is again an area that is looked at, it, it is within the scope of cultural studies to unravel you know what is not sort of sensible in common sense. Then the scope of cultural studies includes very importantly the study of ideology. Okay. Ideology is understood as you know ideas or is understood as consciousness, a certain world view, the way we look and understand and perceive the world and our place in it. Okay. It can also become a doctrine, if you follow a particular ideology or you are caught in a certain ideology and these ideology also forms the maps of meaning. Okay. So, ideology therefore, is an important part of cultural studies, because it tells us that as, as cultural beings, right, we are to a large extent under the sway of certain ideologies or ways of thinking and in our, in some of our lectures for instance, in our lecture on Marxism, uh, you know we shall find that ideology is part and parcel of the power of the ruling class. Right? So, we are constituted by ideology and our actions are you know um, uh, are propelled so to speak by the ideologies or the world views that we hold in our minds. Okay. So, um, if culture is ordinary is culture is to do with uh, you know ways of life, these ways of life are as culture studies will show us are deeply imbued by certain ways of thinking. Right? In fact, Chris Barker in the Sage Dictionary of Cultural Studies has this to say about the importance of ideology in cultural studies. Now, he says this, so influential has the concept of ideology been within cultural studies that the whole field was once dubbed ideological studies. Okay, so, this is just to show you how important the study of ideology is in cultural studies. Then, the scope of cultural studies and within which we understand you know the domain of cultural studies has representation as a very important term in it. Okay. Representation or to, to represent things right, we understand rep, you know everything as a representation or everything is mediated right, any representation is mediated by a certain ideology or a certain way of thinking. Okay. So, representation therefore, if you look at this slide is both inclusive and exclusive, right. Uh, it includes some people and it excludes others, excludes others, it includes certain ways of thinking and it excludes other ways of thinking. So, representation we understand as uh, in cultural studies, we understand as being always impartial, always provisional and always you know whether overtly or covertly okay, always backed by power. So, the scope of cultural studies also entails an understanding of terms like representation and how representations are often as you know are mentioned by one of the critics Danny Cavalier are often uh, also misrepresentations of things. Then let me bring your attention to an important phrase called the circuit of culture and this is by Stuart Hall and we came across Stuart Hall in our first lecture. And um, Stuart Hall gives us this diagram, the circuit of culture. Okay. So, culture may be understood as a circuit having certain components. Okay. These components are in turn 
you know, in turn the key concepts or terms that build the discourse of cultural studies. Okay, and these are a representation, regulation, identity, consumption, and production. So the circuit of culture is again one of the fundamental, uh, you know, uh, fundamental formulations that any scholar in cultural study needs to look at. Okay, um, representation, regulation, consumption, identity, and production are its, uh, you know, uh, you know, key components. Are the key components in this circuit. Um, as given to us by Stuart Hall. Then uh, also we uh, understanding cultural studies entails you know recognizing the fact that language okay, uh, language really is what you know Chris Barker calls a central concern in cultural studies. So, according to Chris Barker language is a central concern of cultural studies. It is the means and medium for the generation of significance or meaning. We saw in the last lecture okay, that meaning creation or the generation of meaning is one of the ways in which culture is understood. Culture is a site, culture is an agent uh, for you know the generation of meaning in our socio-cultural practices. Right? So, Chris Barker says that um, how do we talk about meaning? Okay, how is meaning generated? And he says that language is the chief concern in cultural studies in that it is both the means by which meaning is generated, significance is generated and it is also the medium for the generation of meaning. So, let us read on from Chris Barker, the concept of meaning is core to the explication of uh, culture. To investigate culture is to explore, look at this, to investigate culture, this is how we understand you know the both the methodology and the domain of cultural studies right. To investigate culture is to explore how meaning is produced symbolically in language as a signifying system. Okay? It is only through language that you can have meaning you can have the generation, the, the encoding and the decoding of meaning. So, to investigate culture, okay, what is culture again? The practices of our, you know, our ordinary practices, our everyday day to day practices. right? So, to, investi to investigate culture from a cultural studies methodology, using a cultural studies methodology entails this, is to explore how meaning is produced symbolically um, in language as a signifying system. Here meaning is generated through difference, the relation of one signifier to another rather than by reference to fixed entities in an independent object world. Now, at this juncture we will not unpack this because I will be devoting this uh, you know uh, a lecture solely to understanding this which is um, uh, the lecture on structuralism, okay, how culture is full of signifying practices and how there is no really following a linguistic model, there is no, no direct reference to things. Things both in language and in culture obtain their meaning by you know a system of difference and a system of relation to other units in that. Okay. So, culture in that sense works like a language. At this juncture, suffice it for us to simply understand that um, culture is explored okay, by looking at our symbolic practices, right? by looking at the way in which meaning is created. And how is meaning created? Meaning is created because of this phenomenon called language. Okay? Language is both the, as he says, Barker says here, both the means and the medium for the generation of meaning. Right? Indeed, in another book, Making Sense of Cultural Studies, Barker says, the machinery and operations of language are central concerns and problems for cultural studies. Indeed, the investigation of culture has often been regarded as virtually interchangeable with the exploration of meaning produced symbolically through signifying systems that work like a language. Okay, so, important so, central is language in cultural studies that you know we look at our cultural practices in terms also of language in terms of signifying practices, okay, practices that generate meaning. Okay. Therefore, from this we may argue okay, again arguing for a subjective for the importance of subjectivity and you know uh, the relative 
um, you know, uh, you know the, the fact that objectivity is highly suspect in cultural studies, we therefore go on to say that there are no objective truths, right? There, that that there can only be justifications. Knowledge is a matter of being able to justify. Remember, we we, we had used the term epistemology in the last lecture, and what did we? How did we define epistemology? We defined epistemology as uh, you know the theory of knowledge. We define epistemology as a branch in philosophy okay, that looks at the scope, the origins and the limits of knowledge, limits in the sense of the conditions under which knowledge is possible. There may be different ways in which we can get knowledge. For instance, empiricism is one way in which knowledge may you know be constructed, rationalism is another way. Okay. Now, as far as knowledge production as far as meaning production is concerned in cultural studies, Barker and other scholars say that well it is it all depends on how you justify right, how you justify a belief. For instance, we make this you know we make this difference at least, an at least for elementary purposes, we make this difference or distinction between um, belief and knowledge right. We say that we may have we may hold a belief that need not be knowledge. right? So, knowledge is defined as justified belief, a belief that has been justified. Now, cultural studies holds that in a scenario where we can never have objective truths, because everything is a representation right? and representations are made by human beings in a certain condition of knowledge, okay? in a certain con, uh, you know knowledge situation. Uh, which has been given rise to by contingent events by being in a particular um, you know situation in space and time. Okay. So, cultural studies therefore holds that all you can do is only you know put forward justifications and justifications are represented through one medium which is language. Okay. So, therefore, knowledge becomes more a subjective matter and subjectivity is therefore, um, one of again like language a central concern in cultural studies. right? So, what have we understood till now? I would say a that culture is understood, okay, if you have to understand culture and cultural studies. Culture a is understood as not high forms and practices, culture is ordinary, culture is part and parcel of our way of life, the cultural practices, the forms, the institutions, education for instance is an institution okay, and is part of culture right culture is democratized and culture is to do with the production of meaning as far as this last point is concerned we found that the production of meaning behind the production of meaning the means and medium for you know significance and meaning creation is none but language okay and we found that there are other important things like representation which is always partial like epistemology like subjectivity where knowledge is or you know uh, ultimately a matter of not knowing an objective truth, but about justifications. Now, the more you can justify the more you know you uh, whatever you put forward is understood as, no, as knowledge. Now, behind this these justifications are also issues of power in politics, okay. whose definition should we take, whose description should we take. Right? And we also found that one of the concerns in, of cultural studies is to redescribe, to re uh, signify things, okay, to talk about things in newer ways. Cultural studies is all about talking about things in newer ways, uh, building different discourses, so that you know habitual patterns of thinking, habitual uh, ways of thinking are uh, sort of dismantled and we begin to see things anew. Okay. So, so far this is what is meant by cultural studies, which is this is meant uh, what is meant by you know studying cultural studies the studying our culture from a cultural studies method, methodology. This is what is meant by studying culture using a cultural studies methodology. Okay. Then uh, the scope of cultural studies also includes you know studying other um, issues in terms of cultural formations. Okay. For instance, the nation, the nation is seen as a cultural construct. Now, many of us have you know are used to thinking of nations as a given. For instance, I am an Indian, my nationality is Indian, I belong to 
uh, a place which has certain boundaries okay and um, the, there is you know um, geographically we uh, are all bound together in you know in a country known as india in cultural studies we redescribe this okay by talking about nation in a different way this is one example in how you know by which you can understand what we do in cultural studies okay what we do is we redescribe things uh, we uh, sort of try uh, you know we we sort of try and cancel out okay uh, established ways of thinking now the example i'm giving you is that of nation and what would cultural studies say cultural studies would say that nation is not simply a political organization okay nation is also a matter of discourse now you may think how is nature you know uh, a nation is a uh, political and administrative unit it has definite geographical boundaries how is nation a matter of language how is nation a matter of discourse okay the the answer is nature uh, sorry nation is a cultural construct okay and we represent nation we represent nation in language and nation is a discourse right uh, nation is symbolic for example how is nation symbolic the nation is symbolic in the sense that our uh, you know uh, our perception of a unitary nation um, is held together you know in the common imagination of the people okay by certain symbols certain images for instance the national flag uh, you know uh, the national the national flag the national anthem and um, you know uh, various uh, things that signify our nation so the nation is to be understood as discursive the nation is to be understood as symbolic uh, because even if we do not you know it is impossible for us to know each and every member of um, our nation we nonetheless uh, are bound together by a commonality okay or common pool of so, so to speak imaginative uh, or resources in the imagination and these are uh, as we said our national anthem our, um, our national flag and uh, you know um, we also have so many you know uh, you know sort of national things like our national flower or uh, you know our national dance form etc okay so this is one way in which we understand what we do in cultural studies okay we see well almost everything as a discursive creation or as a creation of language as a creation of representation as a creation of subjectivity right so uh, this you know the, this whole understanding of all cultural forms right all cultural practices and institutions as first and foremost a matter of language a matter of signifying practices a matter of symbolic practices this i would say is how cultural studies is different from other domains different also from its kindred related domains like anthropology like sociology literature and language further i had alluded to science in uh, the last lecture and i said that even science is seen as a discourse okay and the understanding of ourselves you know as beings right is you know when we look at science as a discourse you find for instance that science mediate culture if you look at this slide here you know uh, as i said it's all about description right so if you have a question like if you pose a question like what is it to be a human being right then you are increasingly drawing from the domains or discourses so to speak of genetics of science and technology and of the medical sciences okay so when you describe yourself as a human being, being from you know uh, from within uh, biology for instance then you then you would say that it is science that is uh, you know uh, that is uh, that is enabling you it is a discourse of science that is enabling you it is science that is a mediating force in your understanding or description of yourself as a human being do you follow so understanding culture understanding what cultural studies does is also also entails looking at areas like science which are not considered 
you know part of culture okay which is um, things like you know domains like science which are considered uh, by for instance the positivists as, as you know being isolated from all other different different um, you know uh, cultural activities but we would say in cultural studies like science too is a cultural activity science too is a description in language science too uses a common pool of symbols okay uh, and um, science too needs to be self reflexive in its understanding of how it is a cultural practice. More about this when we talk about uh, science, technology and cultural studies in a lecture in module 4. Right? So, therefore, um, you know this is related to the beginning of uh, uh, cultural studies really. Um, cultural studies began also okay, as uh, what many would call an insurgent sociology. Right, a social, uh, it was uh, part of sociology in the fact that it did not agree with some of the impulses in theoretical impulses in sociology particularly positivism. Right? So, it was an insurgent sociology that you know uh, was against a purely functionalist view of culture. Okay? It, it tried to say that well there are you know there are huge issues to do with power and politics behind the so called working of society you know behind the so called functions of the different you know units of society do you understand for instance let's take an example the family for instance the family is a core unit in sociology it's a core unit of society right and if you study family simply from the point of view of how family you know uh, as a functional part of society and you do not talk about the politics um, of the family, you do not talk about unequal uh, power relations okay, within uh, a family, then you are doing simply a functionalist um, analysis of, of, uh, of family as a unit and not only that you are dangerously playing into the hands of you know. Uh, very powerful discourses right and very powerful ideologies that um, hold the family to be simply you know um, a well functioning unit of society uh, hiding you know issues of inequality and hiding issues of power and politics within the family okay so therefore cultural studies is to be understood as um, almost you know uh, uh, as a domain that resists Okay, certain established ways of thinking particularly the functionalist and positivist ways of looking at our cultural forms and institutions. Secondly, cultural studies was also came about as a critique okay, as a radical critique of instrumental rationality. Now, in, by instrumental rationality we mean that uh, reason we mean reason um, rationality that is used okay, uh, uh, that, uh, that is used to maintain the status quo right that is uh, it comes from uh, um, uh, of an unwavering faith in science and technology it uh, um, comes from looking at science and technology and technological rationality okay as an imperative um, which has uh, you know we, uh, around which we uh, we are not to look at issues of power and politics for instance in, it came about cultural studies therefore came about as a staunch and radical uh, you know critique okay of such kind of rationality okay such kind of rationality gave us a sense of an objectivity okay that was uh, you know uh, that could talk about that uh, you know everything um, from you know or talk about everything uh, in the sense that it would give us the truth with the capital uh, T so to speak. Okay. So, there was therefore, cultural studies is again um, a domain that looks very um, kind of uh, you know is very suspicious about uh, a functionalist way of looking at culture and, and positive way of looking positivist way of looking at knowledge and it is also deeply critical of instrumental rationality. It would rather uh, devise a critical rationality a ras putting rationality to the test critiquing rationality and accepting the best that is there from rationality or or um, reason based thinking. Okay. So, again therefore, Barker says uh, that we have to understand that power let us look at this slide power okay, which gives a domain you know the right to name 
okay, which creates official versions right, and which creates common sense, which legitimizes knowledge. Right. Power is therefore, like subjectivity, like identity, like representation a key concept and a key term in cultural studies. And in fact, cultural studies goes on to say that everything, everything is infused with power, right. Everything is imbued with power, the, you know there is nothing that is natural, okay. all systems are imbued with power. Okay. And that is why, that is the reason why cultural studies you know has as its methodology okay the need to redescribe things okay if pow power can name something then we need to you know in a bid to counter power we will have to redescribe and rename things okay we have to remove the labels that power has given okay and we have to redescribe these things right for instance again as we saw the uh, you know the understanding of uh, family as um, perfectly working um, unit, functional unit contributing to society is a description that has been given by uh, you know uh, um, by by the dominant culture, by dominant ideologies. Okay, as we said, hiding the practices of power that are there. Right. So, the moment we redescribe uh, family as not simply a functional unit, but as an arena or a site of power and subjectivity and of identity, then what we are doing is we are challenging the dominant ways of looking at the family by redescribing. Okay. So, you understand that is how language is used in cultural studies. Okay. Language is the tool, the means and medium of cultural studies. It is, it is you know the tool you know uh, uh, it is really a technology of, uh, of a kind of uh, resisting power. right? moment you can re-signify and re-describe you, you know half the battle is already won, because we begin to as we say cancel out habitual ways of thinking. So, therefore, um, as Barker says uh, power needs to be investigated okay, because power legitimizes the dominant ways of thinking. Then cultural studies is also as we said not only about discourses, it is not, not only about you know um, abstractions and key concepts, uh, cultural studies has as uh, part of its scope okay, a certain pragmatic way of thinking. Yes, we do redescribe things, we do look at the workings of power, of the politics of representation, of uh, everything as, as cultural forms, as subjective forms. But we also have a pragmatic attitude in the sense that we understand everything um, you know in culture to be um, not com not at all representative of things in its totality pragmatism sees cultural forms institutions and practices as anti representational as having no foundations as being provisional and being anti realist in the sense that we cannot ever have a complete understanding of reality, all we can have really are representations. So, all this is towards social policy, okay, towards making cultural social policies and social reform. So, cultural studies definitely has as uh, part of its methodology and scope a deeply political commitment and the commitment is that we redescribe things. Okay, we talk about power representation and uh, identity etcetera uh, in not simply as a linguistic exercise. This is what many people um, you, know, may, uh, you know many critics of cultural studies perhaps they mistake uh, make this mistake of understanding cultural studies only talking about you know uh, only about rarefied discourses you know where you keep on redescribing things and talk about everything as having no foundations. That is not at all the point. Cultural studies has as part of its scope a very you know powerful aspect and that is showing unraveling the politics the workings of politics okay, in culture of power in culture and to help devise policies that would contribute to cultural and social reform. So, I would end with uh, finally, with um, one of again one of the uh, very important words in cultural studies and that is discourse. Okay. We found that cultural studies we found through Barker that cultural studies may also be called the discursive found, uh, you know formation 
okay, ways of speaking. So, discourses therefore, in cultural studies are objects, they are struct, uh, you know structured systems and structuring systems, discourses are ideological systems and discourses of course, are texts that can be decoded by us. Okay. So, if everything is a way of speaking, right, then obviously, these are very powerful objects, right, they are highly structured objects, they are also objects that structure us as cultural beings, they are filled with ideology or ways of thinking and that is why uh, the understanding of discourse and we have in fact, a whole lecture uh, you know devoted to discourse, where we shall be shall be looking at discourse in detail, but at this level it is important for us to understand that discourse is important, because discourse enables power. Okay, let us look at this slide please, discourse enables power, discourse creates power okay. and with power we find that power can give us uh, you know uh, justifications, okay. power can give us um, justifications that, that finally, go on to become truths, power through discourse can give us meaning, power gives us morality and power describes and uh, you know power determines our practices. Okay. So, what are the definite therefore, what are the you know what are the um, terms that make up the scope of cultural studies. Okay. First, we found that we cannot make a clear distinction, we ought not to make a clear distinction between what is natural and what is cultural. We are biological beings and we are cultural beings and uh, the best way to understand ourselves as part and parcel of being uh, part and parcel of culture is from a biocultural perspective, then we also saw that uh, culture studies is essentially uh, di, you know um, formations of discourse and there we found that we cannot ever claim a truly or purely objectivist uh, or a purely objective understanding of reality. Okay. Cultural forms in that they are constructed by human beings, who are themselves part of cultural practices and ways of life. Cultural forms are subject, therefore, subjective forms, right. Uh, culture is to do with representations, with the effects of representation, uh, it is mediated through language. Okay, it is mediated through discourse um, and behind dominant cultural practices are issues of power and politics. Okay. And finally, we saw that cultural studies is not simply talking about things in different ways and redescribing things. Okay. Cultural studies has as its goal um, or its goal is a political one in the sense that it, it seeks to uh, you know finally, um, finally contribute okay, to social reform and to um, better cultural policies simply by you know using, okay, using their findings as they make um, is to find out how meaning is constructed, how discourses are formed, how discourses and representations have power okay, to, to make this world a better place by showing how inequality operates because of misrepresentation for instance, okay. how um, you know uh, media forms again uh, for instance, um, instantiate certain ways, certain definitions for instance of being a woman uh, uh, you know in society or being a good mother for instance, all these are matters of power and representation and this essentially is brought about by certain practices of meaning formation. So, how meaning is constructed? how meaning operates in culture, in our ways of life, how significance okay, comes in. In fact, Clifford Gates um, uh, you know defines culture as the webs of significance that have been spun by us, that have been spun by man in which we are all suspended. Okay. So, it is important for us therefore, as being cul you know, as cultural beings to see how we are constituted, what are you know the descriptions that we go by, what are the descriptions that we abide by okay? and in doing so, we help you know um, help the process of uh, you know uh, help processes in cultural policy in, try, in trying to devise better ways of living, better descriptions, more uh, fair descriptions okay? and also lead uh, you know uh, also lead uh, to better ways of really a living more encompassing ways of living. So, what we have done in this lecture is we have tried to understand cultural studies by pointing to some or pointing at some of 
the its constituent terms uh, and some of uh, you know uh, its articulations and all this would be unpacked in the lectures to come. So, we end with a quotation again from Chris Barker and you to know Chris Barker's text cultural studies theory and practice is a text that you could uh, you know take up as um, you know a, your a textbook really for this course. And Barker says here the forms of power that cultural studies explores are diverse remember cultural studies targets power right. The forms of power that cultural studies explores are diverse and include gender, race, class, colonialism etcetera. Cultural studies seeks to explore the connection between these forms of power and develop ways of thinking about culture and power that can be utilized by agent in the pursuit of change. Okay. So, if anyone says that cultural studies is really a rarefied only a discursive a linguistic exercise and they are utterly wrong okay, because all uh, these investigations are really as Barker says here you, you know uh, to uh, you know to, to be used by us in um, uh, the pursuit of social change and of cultural and political change. Okay. So, we move on then to the discussion and for our first question here is why are subjectivity and identity central concerns in cultural studies. Subjectivity is a central concern in um, cultural studies a because everything every cultural form is seen really as a subjective form in an individual or collective sense and the study of subjectivity is important because subjectivity is what you know is a condition okay are uh, it forms a condition by which we are formed as persons right by which we understand ourselves as human beings okay um, then subjectivity also is important as uh, you know um, a key term in cultural studies because subjectivity really are uh, you know are the processes or other sub subjectivity comprises the processes that go into the construction of ourselves as human beings as cultural beings as knowing beings okay and finally subjectivity is about the experience of being a person okay all these are you know cultural constructions right and how we are made subjects. Remember in the first lecture I had said that if you have a question like you know um, uh, we you know uh, uh, why do we live the kind of lives that we li live in cultural studies we need to reformulate this as how are we constructed as subjects. Okay. So, we are essentially then in, in cultural studies subjects uh, we are agents and how our subjectivity has been formed this should be one of the first questions we ask in cultural studies. Then identity is again important identity vis a vis subjectivity if subjectivity is our you know inner life our experiences and the processes that go into it identity is seen by many uh, at least in contradiction uh, you know, distinction to uh, subjectivity as the social label that is given to us. Okay. So, identity the study of identity is immensely important as a scope as part of the scope in culture of cultural studies because this identity because identity is tied to issues of class, ethnicity, gender, sexuality, race in that we, we use phrases like our racial identity, our ethnic identity, our class identity, our sexual identity and our gender identity. Okay. These also are part and parcel of the labels that are given to us you know in uh, our you know cultural practices. Okay. So, how we are formed as beings in culture. Okay. Subjectivity and identity right, are the key areas that we need to explore if we have to understand ourselves as cultural beings. Next question how does cultural studies problematize common sense okay. and we saw that common sense is not exactly to be considered sensible okay, uh, in, uh, in cultural studies and common sense we found uh, is spontaneous too spontaneous we would say and unconscious when things are spontaneous and unconscious and we consider these to be not well thought out and we consider these to be part and parcel or the tools of ideology or the tools of the workings of power. Okay. So, cultural studies also uh, looks at common sense 
the whole idea of common sense and tries to uh, in fact Stuart Hall uh, in one of his essays says that you know uh, we have to look at the so called commonsensical practices and to see what goes behind making something uh, uh, you know an, a matter of common sense and we will see that there are issues of power and politics and ideology behind things that are considered commonsensical. Okay. Therefore, common sense uh, is tied to ideology basically to dominant forms of ideology right? and we described ideology as ideas, doctrines, consciousness, world view and maps of meaning. Now, these again we may you know uh, unpack this further and you can say that uh, power has you know power is about naming things okay, and name, making those names stick those descriptions stick. Power is what gives rise to common sense and official versions and power is what legitimize all these things the descriptions that you give the common you know the common sense. Um, uh, knowledge and official versions are all workings of power and these need to be scrutinized if these have to be dismantled. Then finally, why is it important to study discourse in cultural studies? Remember, cultural studies itself is defined by Chris Barker as you know discursive formations or ways of speaking. This is important, we need to look at discourse and discourse forms an important part of the scope of cultural studies in that discourse creates power. Okay. Discourse creates power and discourse and power give us what we understand and accept as truth whereas, we say in cultural studies that there is no objective truth all forms of knowledge are subjective. Okay. Then power gives us meaning, gives us descriptions, power gives us our practices and power finally gives us our morality. Okay. So, remember cultural studies sees everything is as as uh, representation as representation effects, cultural studies sees everything as uh, uh, you know provisional right and it is this very flexibility of knowledge in cultural studies that ultimately opens doors to social and cultural change. Remember habits of thinking okay, this is what is sought to be dismantled by cultural studies in a bid for social and cultural change. So, we come to the end of the second lecture and I hope um, you know you have been able to at least uh, you know um, uh, have a grasp okay, to begin with of some of the terms like discourse, power for instance, okay, representation, ideology, subjectivity, identity okay, and the fact that uh, you know cultural studies is, is a domain that is uh, that has as one of its goals political change in society okay, towards leading to a better way of living and also as individuals we understand how we are constructed. Okay. Remember our again I leave you with our mega question why do we live the kind of lives that we live? You have already by now I hope had some idea in the sense that why we live the kind of lives we live are really matters to do with subjectivity, to do with identity, to do with power representation and discourse among other key terms. Okay. So, um, we shall meet in the next lecture and as I said the next cluster of lectures in this module would be devoted to an understanding of ourselves as cultural beings from the point of view of what science has to tell us. Remember we are not going to make a distinction between uh, nature and culture here. Okay, we are also beings of nature and the way we are described as natural beings okay, is also a matter of language. At the same time we have we share and uh, you know as cultural beings all of us share an evolutionary lineage which has given rise to a certain mind. Okay, and uh, culture has been there created by the mind which itself has changed with the changes in brain. So, we need to look at evolution, we need to look at evolutionary psychology, we need to look at how the brain has changed for instance. Okay. So, I shall see you in uh, the next class when we begin to talk about Darwinian evolution. Thank you.